For early season prep, I'm gonna put some stands up. It's just not, he's not running, he's walking, he's like loping. My father's laughing. <laughs> so we go back in the stand and my dad picked him off later in the day with his shotgun. But it, big eight point. But he, he didn't give a f***, he's right down the middle of that cornfield, down on Pennywood Road. I believe it. It's crazy. I just wanted to be there to see you shaking. There. You remember, that I'm sure thing. the first time you saw a big old buck, you probably did a little bit of holy shit. Hey Dustin, you realize hunting with you is like taking my wife shopping? That's a hell of a cart, son. <laughs> That's right, you're carrying my stuff too. I probably shouldn't complain. <laughs> Here, let me... Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. But that's okay. When you stop to go to the bathroom, I'll stand outside and hold your purse. At least this stuff's fun to shop for, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this stuff's a little more fun to shop for. <laughs> so our quandary right now is what worked in late season last year with the stand about 15, 20 yards back um, is not going to work for opening season because we have beautiful clover that's been planted and which means we're going to have good morning feed we're going to have good evening feed right first light last light so we're going to take our stance instead of putting them back in our normal spots we're going to put them out on the edge and then we'll move them back when the leaves drop uh, and you got good shooting out into the field like we normally do so yeah I'd say go ahead and I would, I would find something out on the edge anywhere between the midline there to the corner Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a good shot because they're coming up. You can see where they're still coming up right out, right out there in that, that little yeah. cutout right there. And then that way you'll have a good shot on them. We know we've got traffic out of that corner and we know we've got a lot of traffic out of that corner. So let's go hang some stands. Dustin's up there tying his first tree stand to the tree. Almost got wet a minute ago when some liquid ran down his pant leg. side to side with it. Oh, that ladder's got some good bow to it. Huh? Yeah, we'll have to get some kind of prop on it. So it's up, and then we'll start clearing some shooting lanes. property looks like they just turned it over and planted something. Small one. Might be a mix because that up there where there was clover it looked like it had some brassicas and some winter, yeah, winter wheat in it or something. I, I, we could only hope because that'll keep us here year round. So that's the rubbing tree where he flaked off the bark. <coughs> Those little, the three dead little ash right there, they that's took, where I was sitting. They took it back further. Yeah, they did. They, they used to be out. grass. Yeah, they cleared all that out. So, 
the doe come right across here, literally cross in between those two trees. So yeah, Dave's talking about a two years ago. We got a nice, nice big eight point out of here. Uh, right by the road, right by the river. I mean, spot you wouldn't expect to see something. But. One night I was out here and uh, come out about 100 yards to my right. It was right in the middle of the rut. Wasn't listening to grunting or anything. Obviously on a mission. So it wouldn't come down toward me. Just kept going the way it was going. And uh, I told Dave he had to be out here the next day because I couldn't. And then duck back in right underneath me. And I thought, I'm going to get him. Well, then he goes down. And he was out here the next day. And sure enough, that buck come back chasing doe. And he... Uh, what he's talking about now. And I was watching him here and I'm thinking, that's, that's 50 yards. <clears throat> I'm like, I'm going to take a shot from here if he turns around on me. Well, he walks all the way up. I was in the dead ash trees. There's three dead ash trees right there. He walks right underneath it at the edge of that. Like straight in on me. He's head to me the whole time, so I don't really have a good, perfect shot. Almost had one. I thought he was going to rub that. I was like, I'm going to drill him at 20. Turned his head in, sniffed it a little bit, and then he just kept coming. All I have is this giant this rat guarding everything that I could possibly shoot at. It comes up underneath me, and the whole time I'm up there, I'm just like doing this the whole time, drawing. Yeah. And just doing this, and I'm like, oh, here he comes. And then he comes in. I shoot. Walk out. Walk out to the middle, because there's nothing over there for him to walk to. Then he comes in, and before you know it, I'm doing this. And he's almost directly straight underneath me. And I'm like, I'm not. Well, 20 yard pin does not match up at no. two feet. So I hit him. He runs back over here this corner and I thought well great he's gone well he stops up here looks around they're milling around the, the does are still over there milling around sees them and of course like Mike said only one thing he's thinking about so he starts to cut diagonal and I drill him right in the center of this field uh, quartering away on the wall just, I was like I'm not going to stop him uh, he's just not stopping or anything so he's walking I just let him a little bit caught him in the back rib came out the front shoulder and then yeah. 150 yards into that thick over those trees on the other side of the clear area is where he dropped. Yeah, them dummies like to hunt. They're the dummies I came with.